Well, that changed pretty fast, Lake offense. That was um that was pretty quick. Go from feeling a certain way about 28 hours ago to feeling a completely different way 28 hours later. Appreciate you guys tuning in, Laker fans. A um, little bit of post-game show action. Obviously, the Lakers lose to the Timberwolves, 127 to 117, the final score. We got a lot to get into in uh, tonight's post-game show. A um, lot of hype coming into this game. And then about two hours before the game starts, we find out the news about LeBron. Obviously, Anthony Davis leaves the game as well. So the Lakers uh, depleted coming into this game. I'll tell you who doesn't care is the Minnesota Timberwolves and the rest of the Western Conference. So they're obviously going to try to take advantage of that. Not a good day for the Los Angeles Lakers uh, tonight and just not a good day in general. I thought a lot of the games that they could have maybe used some help on uh, that didn't happen. So nobody played ball with the Lakers tonight. Um, so we'll spend a little time talking about the game, the Anthony Davis injury, um, some post game stuff I heard from uh, the folks over at Spectrum Sportsnet on kind of some ideas, I guess you can call for Anthony Davis, throw some goggles on here in these last few games because of how important it is. Dave McMenamin sent out a tweet about doesn't think it's going to affect his game on Tuesday against the Warriors. We'll do the latest in the standings. We'll preview the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors, and uh, and we'll call it a night. Thank you for being a part of the show. Please subscribe to the channel. If you got a comment, 100% want to get it read, I uh, encourage you to use the Super Chat. Uh, either way, I'm going to be reading the comments. And uh, shout out here to Underdog Fantasy, proud partner of the postgame show. Okay, let's get started here. Feel free to throw your comments in. Um and, uh, and and we'll take it from there. So, look, simply put, let, let's not even talk about the game yet because the game was kind of secondary. Before the game started, I was getting ready. I just got to uh, crypto, just got to the arena, was preparing for the pregame show, already kind of had all my notes all ready to go, topics I was going to get into, look at how the Lakers have been doing. Anthony Davis balling out. How's this dude not mentioned more for Defensive Player of the Year? and um, just some more chatter about what he's doing. D'Angelo Russell, hey, I was wrong on D'Lo. Uh, so I had my notes all ready to go. And then we get news that LeBron is out. He's out of the game. And when I first heard it, I was like, oh, wow, okay, well, he's out of the game because he's 39 years old. He's obviously got, uh, I'm sure, some bumps and bruises. It's a second of a back-to-back. That's what I assumed. And if you guys remember, I was doing the post-game show here yesterday. I was talking about how I didn't think either of these players were going to miss a game, even though it was going to be a second of a back-to-back. -back. I just thought that ain't going to happen. Well, it wasn't LeBron's ankle. It wasn't his body. It was flu-like symptoms. So Braun obviously must have been uh, not feeling very good if he was not able to go in uh, tonight's game. So flu-like symptoms, that kind of threw me off. But it was like, okay, now we got a real – we got a real matchup. By the way, I thought we were going to have a real matchup either way because Minnesota, even without Carl Anthony Towns, they're 10 and 5 in their last 15 games without Carl Anthony Towns. I want to say they're 12 and 5 overall when Carl Anthony Towns doesn't play this year. So they're not a bum team when he's not there. They're just not as good. They obviously lose some offense, but um, they got ballers, they got players that can play. So without LeBron, I thought, okay, we're going to have a real dogfight on our hand. Michael and I, Michael Thompson and I were talking about in the pregame show that this kind of evens things out here. No Carl Anthony Towns there, no LeBron on this side. This is going to be a tough game. Um, and then, you know, we all saw uh, Anthony Davis play 12 minutes tonight, four points, four rebounds, three assists, two steals. He was out after the 12 minute mark. Um, Gets hit in the eye again. I guess it's the same exact eye that he suffered an injury before. Let me see something here. I want to see when the Lakers put this out. I want to read what they put. Let me just find it real quick. Anthony Davis left. No, that was before the game. All right, well, they didn't really put anything out. I guess it was just Trudell and everybody else that was reporting that he was obviously out for the remainder of the game. But Anthony Davis, again, misses the game dealing with this uh, issue with his eye, swells up again supposedly. 
So not a good thing for Anthony Davis and certainly not a good thing for the Lakers. This is weird because it's not his arm. It's not his leg. It's not an ankle. It's not a knee. It's none of that stuff. And James Worthy and Robert Ory kept talking about in the postgame show on Spectrum that you got to throw some goggles on, my brother, that this is we're too late in the game here. You've already had this injury before. You also don't want to deal where you keep getting the same injury in the same place. Maybe it deals to maybe it uh, leads to something else. So, you know, I feel bad for Anthony Davis, but at, at the same time, um, if there's a solution here for at least the remainder of this season, and the idea on the concept is go uh, go get some goggles on, then then go get some goggles on. Whatever it is that you have to do. Uh, yeah, McMenna put out Anthony Davis being treated for an eye injury that he previously needed to receive medical attention for after a loss to the Golden State Warriors. You guys remember in that Warriors game Saturday night game a couple weeks back. He gets injured. He leaves the game, and Lakers basically have no shot against the Golden State Warriors. Not that much different than today. It was kind of the exact same thing. Um, he can't go. He's got the eye injury, and then it's a wrap. Lakers are definitely, definitely 100% not beating the um, the Minnesota Timberwolves if LeBron James and Anthony Davis are there. It's just not going to happen. So what happens from here? We'll find out. I'll read another tweet here from Dave McMenamin. There is optimism that Anthony Davis will be able to return to the lineup on Tuesday against Gold State Warriors, a source familiar with the situation told ESPN. So um, right out the gate that gives you a little bit of information, not just for this game, but potentially for the next game. I did listen to Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham's like, yeah, I'm not talking about Tuesday's game. There's no lock or guarantee on anything. He just said, we'll, we'll find out later. Let's uh, basically, he wasn't going to give any information on, um, on AD. So uh, keep that for what it is. So before the game, you know, by the time the first quarter is done, you got LeBron not playing this game and you got Anthony Davis that leaves the game with his eye injury, obviously not a good situation for the Lakers. So they'll have to, uh, they'll have to work around that uh, the rest of the way here. Um, as for the actual game, so once Anthony Davis goes out, now it's basically you got to play perfect basketball to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mentioned it. You know, Minnesota's got a solid squad. Um, you needed to play perfect basketball. Well, I'll tell you a couple of guys that were really, really good tonight. Rui was phenomenal. 11 of 16 from the field. Rui had 30 points and six rebounds. And incredibly efficient. I mean, Rui Hachimura just continues. His play has been outstanding. It's been phenomenal. He's been efficient. Um, it just continues to oppress over the last 30 days or so. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie jumped to the starting lineup, hit three threes, got to the free throw line a ton, 18 points, seven assists, five rebounds. He was fantastic. Jackson Hayes, you can't ask for a better night from him. 19 points, 10 rebounds, and five steals. Jackson Hayes was incredible. Remember, I said the Lakers are going to have to play a perfect game if they're going to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves without LeBron and Anthony Davis leaving after the first quarter. Those three guys were perfect. You couldn't ask for anything more from those three players, and uh, uh, certainly I don't think anyone's expecting them to have that. I mean, really to have a 30-plus night. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie to fill it up, fill up that entire box score. Jackson Hayes, those are incredible, incredible numbers. Eight of nine from the field. The problem for the Lakers, if they were going to play perfect, your two other guys who just kind of shows how much, you know, how, how different their game becomes when LeBron and AD aren't there. They're the recipients of having two Hall of Famers that they get to play with. But that's how the Lakers built this roster. That's why Austin Reeves can shine. Certainly that's why D'Angelo Russell can shine. You take out LeBron and Anthony Davis, now the defense on the Minnesota Timberwolves, they just say, all right, cool. Let's let D'Lo get in no rhythm at all, make him drive the ball, make him take tough shots, make him facilitate. Kind of the same thing for Austin Reeves. Just keep Austin Reeves inside that three-point line. If he's going to hit a tough shot, he's going to hit a tough shot. D'Lo was 5 of 19 from the field, 1 of 7 from the three-point line. And Austin Reeves was 4 of 14 from the field, 2 of 8 from the three-point line. Reeves continuing to struggle. I mean, just efficiency perspective. Reeves has been struggling already. Now all of a sudden you got one of the best defenses in the NBA basically telling Austin Reeves, we get to focus on you and not LeBron and not Anthony Davis. 
I'm not shocked that those two guys struggled. But if you were going to and give the Lakers credit, they made it a run at one point. They're down 20 points. Was it more than 20? Double check here. Um, but at, at one point, obviously down big. Let's see what here. 20 was the highest that um, that the Minnesota Timberwolves were up. They tried. I mean, they did everything they can to try to make it a game. I think Lakers pulled to within, was it five, I want to say, four or five, something along those lines. Uh, got it down to 97 and 92, and then eventually Minnesota just took over again, which is not a you know a complete shocker here. But Lakers hung, actually outscored the Minnesota Timberwolves in the second half, but I, I go back to it. You got to have all your players play perfect if LeBron and AD aren't there. And they had great contributions from some other players, but D'Lo and Reeves, uh, they struggled tonight. Um, give D'Lo credit because he was still facilitating. I mean, that that's the one thing that I will say. It's D'Angelo Russell, as bad as he played, still had 11 assists and seven rebounds. So he was finding other ways to be effective. Austin Reeves was not. So Austin Reeves was basically, you got 14 points, but you took 14 shots. And you only had two assists and three rebounds. So Reeves clearly didn't have it going tonight. And uh, that's a big reason why the Lakers lost. Um, another reason why the Lakers lost. They have no idea how to guard how to guard Nas Reed. 31 points for Nas Reed. 11 rebounds. 6 of 8 from the three-point line. 12 of 16 from the field. I saw Trevor Lane from Lakers Nation. He put out some stat. I guess I'm assuming what he was saying. Let me look it up here real quick. I think what he was saying was Nas Reed really struggled in their last game against the Suns, and Minnesota lost that game by 10. So basically, of course, Nas Reed, yeah. Nas was 3 of 13 from the field, only had 8 points against the Phoenix Suns. Of course, tonight against the Lakers, he drops 31. Nas Reed falls out against the Lakers. But I, I will say this. Nas Reed's been playing good. Even when Carl Anthony Towns is out, he's been averaging 16 points, 6.5 rebounds. In the month of April, it's only four games in, but coming into tonight, he was 18 points, seven or eight rebounds, something like that, 1.7 steals, 1.7 blocks, and this is only going to help his total because he dropped another 31 points with two steals and 11 rebounds. So Nas Reed's a baller, a, 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 a real, real baller. Um, they got a good team. I will say this. They got a lot of guys. I think they have more depth in Minnesota Timberwolves than they're probably being given credit to. But if they want to make a real run, Carl Anthony Towns has to be in their lineup. And I don't think anybody knows when Carl Anthony Towns is coming back. Their their radio guy does radio play by play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Came on the pregame show with me today. I used to actually work with him down in San Diego. His name's Alan Horton, one of the nicest guys. But he said that nobody really knows as far as when uh when he's coming back, when when uh, Carl Anthony Towns is coming back. But Minnesota could be dangerous. Um, this could very easily be the Lakers and the Timberwolves in a first-round matchup. And if I got to be completely honest, if LeBron and Anthony Davis are there, I don't think Minnesota wants this matchup. I don't. And that's not to say that Minnesota can't win the series or won't win the series. It means this is going to be a long series. and. Uh, you know, Lakers got talent too. So this isn't uh this would probably be the best first round matchup in the entire Western Conference if these are the if these are the two teams that meet. Um, but I really think they gotta have cat. Uh I think that they, they need another another guy that they could rely on, on scoring. Now they dropped one twenty seven, but again, LeBron and Anthony Davis aren't in the game. So what the hell are the Lakers uh, supposed to do? All right, let me look at some of your guys' uh, comments here. Um, all right, let's, uh, take a look here. Rui did ball out. He did, um, give the man, uh, a ton of credit and he's, he has not been doing this for just a week or two. Rui's been like this in March. He was incredible. And, you know, it's continuing now in the month of April. Let me find this one real quick. I want to see if I could find Rui's numbers in March were 17 points a game, five rebounds, 59% from the field, 
and 47% from three. So now obviously a couple games in April, he's been great as well. I don't know what those numbers are in April, but um, certainly, uh, certainly making it happen still. Where do I sacrifice my eye for AD? Alex, we appreciate you on this channel. You know what I mean? The fact that you're willing to give up your left eye through for a strong playoff run says a lot about you, Alex, and your character, who you are as a person, as a man. All right, thank you, Alex, for offering that. Um... I have a hard time believing the AD needs to be taken out for the whole game. Xavier. I don't know what goes into that. I have no idea. I don't know if there's something further than just, you know, an eye injury or something along those lines. But um, I don't like trying to play doctor. I don't like trying to sit here on post game and, you know, questioning a player and saying, ah, you know what? He should have been in that game. I just don't. I, I, I have no way of knowing whether he could have played or he couldn't have played. I know Anthony Davis has played in he's missed five games. He's played in 74 games so far this year. That's the most he's ever played, uh, at least with the Lakers. So I, I don't – he knows where we are in the season. I don't think Anthony Davis is missing this game. What I will say, what sucks about this is he had to leave the Warriors game, had to leave the Minnesota Timberwolves game, that's basically two games for a similar kind of injury. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Don't you think it's time for AD to start wearing goggles? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Just wear them through the rest of the season. I need mask AD from Trevor. Um... D'Lo and AR have a really tough time with Wolves' defensive pressure. They almost take them completely out of the game. Here's the thing, Christopher. When those players now don't have to worry about Anthony Davis and LeBron James, they can now focus on the two, the next two best players for the Lakers, which is Austin Reeves and, uh, and D'Angelo Russell. And some nights it might be Rui, but um, it has more to do with that, is that the defenses can focus on Austin Reeves. How an awesome reason D'Angelo Russell going to go off when LeBron James and Anthony Davis aren't there? I mean, they're going to need at least one of those guys there. And tonight it started with Anthony Davis, but it didn't stay with Anthony Davis. All right, what else we got here? Um, a lot of people here better have goggles next game. No excuses. This I can't keep taking him out of the game. We need all those wins more than ever. No, this was uh, this one definitely hurt. Uh, let's let's actually talk a little bit about what this does in the standings here for a quick second. So Lakers lose one twenty seven to one seventeen to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, let me just kind of walk through what went on in the NBA today and the effect that these games had. So Mavericks got another win over the Rockets. Not that the Lakers are going to catch the Mavs, but Another team in the Western Conference, obviously. Um, Clippers. How the hell did Clippers come back in that game? I didn't see the highlights. All I know is they were down 26 points and came back against Cavs. Cavs, why are you guys choking? Freaking close your game out. Um, okay, but the games that really affected the Lakers. So Pelicans and Suns were kind of interesting. I was kind of, I was, I was like, wait, who do we want in this game? We want Pelicans or do we want Suns? Then I thought about it. I'm like, all right, well, if the Suns lose, you still got a shot at number six, but you basically got to win out. But if the Pelicans win, um, or I'm sorry, if the Pelicans lose, then they would have had a chance to be at number seven by the time today was all said and done if the Lakers had won their game and you still got another game against the Pelicans. Anyways. Whatever you were looking for, I was leaning more towards the Pelicans losing, and of course the Pelicans won. So that was kind of a kind of a weird game. Pelicans have been struggling, lost four in a row, at one point down double digits against the Suns early, and then came out in a, in the second quarter, at least the quarter I watched, kind of punked the Suns a little bit. Jose Alvarado was phenomenal. Zion was doing this thing. And the Pelicans kind of just woke themselves back up. 
and, and they're going to try to power through the rest of the season and hold on to, you know, potentially the sixth spot or the seventh spot. And they still got another match against the Lakers. So then Pelicans won. Kings took care of business against Brooklyn. They won by 30. And then Warriors beat the Jazz. So with all that being said, share the screen here for a quick second. Talk some NBA standings. Uh, where are we at here? Here's what we're looking at. NBA standings. Here's the latest. Remember when we were in eighth for like half a day? And everybody made a big deal about it, including myself, that the Lakers finally got out of the number nine spot? Wouldn't take very long to go back to the number nine spot. Um, if the playoffs started today, the Lakers would play the Golden State Warriors. In a one-game playoff at Crypto, they'd have to win that game. If they won that game, then they'd have to play the winner, or I'm sorry, the loser of the Pelicans and the Kings on the road. And then if they won that game, the matchup that we just saw would be the matchup that the Minnesota Timberwolves would have in the first round. It would be Lakers and the Wolves in the first round. I'll take my chances with that. The problem is just the path to get there. The path is you can't have a bad game. The path is you cannot have a night. And there's going to be some freaking pressure on the Lakers because you know there will be because it's the Lakers. You can't have a night where you just struggled from the three-point line and you lost because if you did that and it was at New Orleans or it was at Sacramento, whatever, you picked the team, then uh, then that's a wrap. Then the Lakers season ends before it even before the playoffs even start. So – that's the latest right now um, with the standings going on. So that gives you a, a little bit of an idea right there. Okay. Um, I got to give a shout out here to uh, our partner, Underdog Fantasy, a fantastic partner on uh, the show. Um, if we give a quick story here, Underdog Fantasy. So, they partnered with me, very nice of them. Uh, I had reached out to them, told them that I'm obviously doing this post-game uh, show and also that this is my channel. This is my own personal channel, Hoops Talk. Had it for obviously a, a number of years. So I appreciate their partnership, that right out the bat. What I would appreciate you guys doing is if you guys play any daily fantasy sports, if anybody out there enjoys playing um, fantasy sports, you can play underdog fantasy. And all you got to do is use my code HoopsLA. So by using the code HoopsLA, what does that mean? HoopsLA means if you get on the site, you sign up with a new email address or you download the app, you get a $100 uh, deposit match. So you put $50 into the account, they'll match that. You got free $50 to play with. Put $100 in there, you'll have $200 in your account. The $100 you put in plus a deposit match. There are no NBA games tomorrow, so I'm going to play the NCAA championship game. And I just took the two bigs because I think these are the only guys that I know. Donovan Klingen, who's the big for um, the uh, for UConn, higher or lower than 14 points, I'm going to go lower. Zach Eady, higher or lower than 24 and a half points, that's the other big. I'm going to go lower on this one as well. All I got to do is bet 20 bucks. Now I know there's a game going on tomorrow, no NBA games, but I could still find a game to kind of enjoy, to have fun, have some skin in the game, however you want to call it. Um, I put my pick in, and I'm done. Please do me a favor. If you do go on Underdog Fantasy and you do sign up with your uh, email address, please use the code HoopsLA. It gives, the, gives some credit here to uh, the channel. And uh, also, it uh, obviously, I'd appreciate you guys doing it as well. Okay, let's get into some more of your guys' comments here. No NBA games tomorrow. The hell do I do tomorrow? Let me see what he got here. Um... Just need Kings to lose two and Pels to lose one, not counting the game we play them last one. of. Well, let's let's go through this because I think this is what we're going to start doing here. 
basically Lakers, you got to win out and you still got a shot at number six in a weird way. I mean, Phoenix obviously has got to lose games. Let me uh, check the – let's check the Tankathon remaining schedule here. So Phoenix still has a game against Minnesota, two against the Clippers, one against the Kings. So Phoenix still got a tough schedule, man. They still got a uh, a really tough schedule. Let's see what happens there. If they went two and two and Lakers won out, Lakers would pass Phoenix. So you need a couple losses. Lakers obviously can't lose. All right, let's see some other teams there in the mix. Sacramento, they still got Thunder, Suns, Pelicans, Blazers. A lot of these teams are going to be playing each other. So they're going to be hurting each other in the process. That obviously is an advantage for the Lakers as well. Okay, let's keep going. New Orleans, they got Sacramento, Lakers, Golden State, and Portland. So literally all these teams are playing each other. And then Golden State, Pelicans, Lakers, Portland, Utah. So Golden State actually in a decent spot because their schedule is the easiest of everybody left. Um, getting the number six spot is not out yet, but it's very close to being out. Lakers do have the tiebreaker against the Pelicans. They have the tiebreaker against the Phoenix Suns. They do not have the tiebreaker against the uh, – uh, wait, no, Pelicans, they're still going to play. They don't have the tiebreaker against the Kings, and right now they don't have the tiebreaker against the uh, Golden, uh, Golden State Warriors until they play them again. Lakers now in the ninth position, yes. Could this possibly have been considered a scheduled loss holding Braun out? Then they just said keep AD out too since they already considered the game the loss. Um, no, I don't think so, Christopher. I don't. Not at this stage. If this was November, sure. If it was December, probably. January, cool. I get it. But I don't think at this stage. I mean, basically the Lakers were putting themselves in a position where they could potentially get out of the playing tournament. So this game was critical. I actually think just this all came down to the Anthony Davis thing. If AD was available, was able to play the rest of that game, he would have, but he clearly wasn't. So that changes everything. Um, all right, let me get a couple more of your comments here. All right. If we locked in, we're winning all three games. Yeah. We'll see. Here's the funny thing. It's not even just being locked in. Like, If we look at these last three games, I think the Lakers are a better team than the Golden State Warriors, period. I just do. I believe they're a better team than the Golden State Warriors. So this game coming up on Tuesday, I fully, fully expect. Now LeBron's got to play. Anthony Davis got to play. Obviously, these guys have to play. But I fully, fully, especially Anthony Davis. AD is the key to this whole thing. If Anthony Davis doesn't go, and again, I, I, read, a, I read a tweet a little bit earlier that David Menman said sources say that AD will be ready to go for Tuesday. But... Um, I fully expect the Lakers to beat the Golden State Warriors. I do. I think they're better. I think they got more size. I think they got more length. I think the Lakers are a matchup just problem for the Golden State Warriors. With that being said, Golden State can win one game, right? Lakers can struggle from the field. Uh, the Warriors, they, they play good enough team basketball. They shoot. I think Clay had 30-plus tonight. Um, they're a team that can be very dangerous. So with that in mind, they could still eventually lose that game just because the Golden State Warriors played one good game. That's why the playoff thing is so scary against the Warriors. The playoff thing, just being in the play, and especially being in the 9-10 spot where you have to win two games just to get the hell out. Like, that's what becomes so dangerous. You know what happens if Lakers lose to the Warriors on Tuesday? Let's see. They'd pick up a game there. They'd have 35. They'd still be in ninth, but Golden State would kind of be in the driver's seat to pass them. Not driver's seat, but if they went out, 
then Golden State would pass the Lakers. Then it's just a matter of what Lakers do in those last two games. But there's no guarantee, even with the Lakers still just being two games back from the number six spot, they could they could still fall to number 10. So that, that just kind of shows you the scenario. I got faith, too, that the Lakers will beat the Warriors, that they should beat the Warriors, but I'll go back to it. Anything can happen in one game against Golden State Warriors. All right, let's look at some more uh, comments here. Leon goes to my point here. Um, well, let's see what else we got here. Do you think even if we make it out of the play and we'll only make it into the playoffs to go out like suckers? No, I actually don't. I think if they just make it to the playoffs, I think they're a headache. I think they're a big headache. Now I, I'm looking at the Lakers and this is it. I mean, it is, it's, it, this is the situation. So it is what it is, but think about today's game as an example. And look at all the guys that are sitting on the sideline. Vando's still out there sitting on the sideline. By the way, I saw him warming up before the game. He was just taking shots. Not, not, not any real, he wasn't out there, you know, running drills or anything like that. Just kind of casually shooting jumpers, but um, Gabe didn't play today. That's just kind of part of his routine. Uh, LeBron obviously didn't play today. Vando was out today. Anthony Davis left the game. Like they got guys. If right now you told me Lakers are healthy, they got everybody and they got to the playoffs. And let's assume Vando is there and can give you 10 to 15 minutes a night just playing defense. It's a deep ass team. It is. LeBron, Anthony Davis, Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, and D'Angelo Russell is a badass starting five. That's a really good starting five. Um, you got a perfect mix of guys that Anthony Davis, you got a perfect mix of one of the best defensive players in the NBA as your kind of your catalyst, your foundation. You got a lot of size and length. You got guys that can that can be effective without the ball. You got LeBron, that's one of the greatest to ever do it. You got D'Lo that's playing the best basketball of his career. You got Rui, who's been incredible efficiency wise that starting five is phenomenal then coming off the bench i know it's not the most consistent but torian prince been in the league for a long time spencer dinwiddie been in the league a long time gabe fits it went to a you obviously made a final runs with my finals run with miami vando we'll see if he can come in i think the lakers still got they got a chance to be very dangerous in the playoffs and a real real headache but you also kind of probably need a lot of things to go your way as well Right. Is Gabe Vincent ever going to really be back in in midseason form? Probably not. If Vando comes back, what can you really ask a guy to do that's been out since February 1st? Um, so they'll have question marks as well. But I no, I don't think they would just go out like punks. I think they would be a tough out for anybody. They'd be a tough out for anybody. All right, let's see what else we got here. D'Lo and Reeves lost their confidence tonight. Reeves was turning the ball over. D'Lo was a passer. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen tonight for them. It just wasn't. The defense is too good, and because they're that good, they could just focus on those guys. Um, Fully believe Lakers winning next three games. I got everybody saying, AD, go get some goggles. Reggie Pitts, Allen, don't skip my comment. A lot of comments coming in, Reggie. We all knew this would be a tough game, but we should be good the rest of the way. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie strong-armed me. Reggie, I'm not here by myself. I Sometimes I miss some comments here. Jeez, man. <laughs> Relax. Right, let's get some more of these here. Uh, Darwin really had four guards with Rui at the five. I think that's where they're just basically trying to make a run. You know, Jackson Hayes was in for most of the game. How many minutes did Hayes end up playing? By the way, Hayes was good today. Get, Hayes was good tonight. 33 minutes for Jackson Hayes. So 19 points, 10 rebounds, five steals. Good for him. I heard D'Lo saying in the postgame, 
Dude's about to get a, a payday. Kind of feel like Kyle Anderson's swipe to the eye was on purpose. Didn't really make a play on the ball. Ah, I don't know. I, I wasn't really feeling that. Uh, I didn't think. It didn't look like it was on purpose to me, my opinion, my perspective. But uh, um, I didn't think. Uh, I didn't think anything was on purpose. Uh, Sean, by the way, thank you for the super. I appreciate that. There's Reggie. Oh, man, there's a lot of comments. There's a lot of comments coming in. Like it was personal. You're my guy, Reggie. All right, let me see a couple more of these. All right, next game for the Lakers, by the way. So only three games left. Um, Warriors beat the – who did they play today? I was just looking at the score. Who did Warriors beat today? Warriors beat the uh, Jazz today, like everybody else in the NBA. How many has Utah lost in a row? Did they ever get a win? I know they were just struggling. I'm going to look at that real quick. I'm going to preview the Warriors game real quick. I don't even think Steph played today. Utah, 12 in a row for the Utah Jazz. Just giving everybody W's. All right, so Warriors earlier today, so they beat Utah 118-110. to 110. So head-to-head, -head, I want to make sure I got this right. Lakers and Warriors uh, so far head-to-head -head this season. So this is what we got. Remember that game in January. So Lakers played the Warriors. Remember the double overtime win by the Lakers? They beat the Warriors 145 to 144. So that was a uh, that was the one where Steph hit a big three, and then LeBron drove to the basket on the final possession, got two free throws, and the game was over. So um, that was one of the games. Then the Lakers played the Warriors uh, two more times after that. I want to say Braun didn't play in one of them. I'm almost 100% Braun didn't play in one of them. Warriors won a game 110 to 128 in gold in uh, San Francisco. And then the last one Lakers played was March 16th, so a few weeks ago here at Crypto. And that's the one where Anthony Davis left the game and didn't come back. Lakers lost that game 128 to 121. So they're up 2 1 on the season series. And this game will either give the Lakers kind of that cushion and, hey, they're not falling to number 10, or Golden State is basically in a really good position to pass the Lakers. That's what Tuesday's game means. Um, for tonight's game, the game against the Utah Jazz, Steph won't play Sunday against the Jazz due to rest. So Steph did not play um, in this game. Looks like... Draymond Green left the game in this game as well. Andrew Wiggins didn't play in this game as well. So they still got the win. Uh, they handled business even with those players out. Now, I'm going to just assume here that everybody's going to play for the Golden State Warriors on um, on Tuesday. If it, it, I mean, I'm just assuming here that they want to get the hell out of that number 10 spot. But, yeah, Draymond only played 21 minutes. I saw Clay. I was doing the pregame show, and Michael Thompson, his dad, um, Clay's dad, was talking about how he was shooting really well. So he had 32 back in the starting lineup. So both teams will be desperate. Both teams want to get the hell out of Lakers want to get the hell out of the number nine spot. Uh, Golden State wants to get the hell out of the number 10 spot. So this game's obviously critical for both teams here. And, um, you know, obviously how it plays out, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, that's another big one coming up for the Lakers. Only three games left to go. LeBron is not missing an opportunity to play versus Curry. I'm assuming it's both ways. I'm assuming I'm assuming that happens both ways. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Is AD going to get bumped again and miss the game? We're going to get start getting some of these. I guarantee you we're going to have conversations like this coming tomorrow. I'll be on radio all day tomorrow. I got Lakers talk tomorrow. Uh, national media, people are going to be saying this. 
that, hey, look, you know, when it counts most, Anthony Davis is in there. That's just going to come with the territory, and I hope AD just shuts everybody up again on Tuesday and keeps doing what he's doing because he's having a phenomenal season. He's played 74 games, so he's got some work to do, and uh, and Lakers certainly got some work to do as well. Um, okay, a couple uh, reminders here. So I got my radio show tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., so I'll just do my regular radio show tomorrow with uh, Travis Rogers. I got Lakers talk tomorrow, but it's going to be a little bit later. Uh, it's going to air after the finals March Madness game. Sammy Long, intern here at Hoops Talk, who's kind of highlighting some of these comments here. He's going to do a preview video for the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors. He's been doing a great job of doing that. Expect that to be posted probably around 8 o'clock, somewhere around there. We'll make sure to get that posted so we can get that in the books. And then I'll be back uh, on Tuesday after the Lakers take on the Warriors. So busy couple of days. We'll keep pumping content out here. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Appreciate you guys consuming the content. Hopefully you guys continue to like, out, like what we're doing here over on Hoops Talk. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. Lakers lose to the Timberwolves 127-117. I'll be back Tuesday. Sammy tomorrow. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good rest of your night.